Right. So I'm Michael O'Connor, and the piece I presented uh, two weeks ago at Impulse Dance this year was called Tertiary in the Eight Tension series at Schauspiel House. Way. And the, so, the, so the title is in the indication of, of that it is a trio, but can you tell me something more about the title? Because for a non-native speaker, I was a bit like, what does this mean? Even for a native speaker, and if you look up what tertiary means, it just means primary, secondary, tertiary. Mm -hmm. It's a term used for the third. Okay. Um, and it's used in many fields for many different ways. Um, I understood the term through color. Um, so you have your primary colors, yeah. red, yellow, and blue, tertiary, or sorry, secondary, orange, green, and okay, purple. Okay. And then for me, tertiary has, it's just kind of an interesting concept. Like the tertiary colors are then orange, yellow on, on the color chart. And there's no indication of red in the term orange, yellow. Because the, so, so the, the original is sort of... The red is absorbed mm -hmm. in the title orange. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have the red, you wouldn't have orange, mm -hmm. yellow. So there becomes a tension. There becomes, a, for me, a, a complexity in, in, in those colors that usually have more original names, like, like ochre or yeah. Dijon mustard or, or something for the... For your, and then there's already then a tension in, in that quality difference than red or yellow. Um, so I was interested in, in how that third level confuses things. It's the first step in twisting things. It's, it's how I kind of just interpreted it. I don't know, something like this. Very good. Does that mean that you have the, like taking away empathy, but empathy is there, but it's like... Uh, the whole, yeah, the whole piece is around empathy, but empathy means something else to other people. Um, there's either, I don't know, four or five different types of empathy. I can label it different ways, but um, mimicry, uh, mentalizing, experience sharing, compassion, and pro-social concern. And when people think of empathy, they think of compassion yeah. or pro-social concern. How, how did you start working on this track? Like, what was the maybe like first seed that made you at all go into these sciences surrounding the broader understanding of <laughs> empathy like like what i think the previous piece looking at the neuroscience or cognitive science of love which i mixed with more poetry and psychological aspects then i, I wanted to become more dry and really go to just dry neuroscience articles dealing with the brain, dealing with monkeys and sticks, and um, ex mm, firing of neurons in the brain. It was very, very dry articles. Um, and actually, m more of a poetry came out when I, was, when I went that dry. The example I always give is, is when you see somebody, like a football player, uh, go to kick the ball, and he misses, and he breaks his leg, and his bone pops out, and everybody's... When they picture this, or they see it, um, this automatic, this, this motion comes from you thinking about it, or imagining it happens to yourself, or really feeling it on your skin, which then leads to the question, how do you make practices of things that are automatic? Mm. I mean, if I'm working with Karen, but Karen's being pushed by Raul, I peripherally pick up Raul's actions, and I mentalize that he's gonna keep pushing her, it's all in milliseconds of normal human perception. And I have to then figure out if, if she's going to keep being pushed by him, can I continue with what I've chosen to do with her? Um, and that's kind of just the metaphor for that it's not just yellow and red. And that I'm working as, the, as a mixture of the two, as orange-yellow. I think the piece builds on contemporary training, builds on contact improv training, uh, but then I like to use the automatic behaviors as human beings we already know how to use. And I think in that automaticness, there is a, there's a use of space 
I know how close I can put my hand to someone's chin. And if it's too close, then it becomes romantic. I know I can put my elbow to someone's elbow very closely, and that's not romantic. You do it in elevators. I mean, I'm, I'm already provoking, I'm already um, using the automaticness that I say we know how to use, and then asking me and my dancers then to do the opposite, which, which doesn't mean go back to the dance training, but it's, it's kind of jumping two steps. Like the third one again. The third, the third step again. <laughs> Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean. What is this uh, second word? Yeah. So longing. Longing. Ah, longing. Okay. Longing. longing. This is kind of a new thing. I just kind of realized now, like a year after, um, if you look at all the music that was used, there's four songs from Hollywood to Schubert classical to soul music, um, each person is complaining about someone that's not there. The Schubert is called Serenade, um, singing to someone that you want, um, as well as we go from as far away as possible to being closer and closer until finally we're touching. Um, there is this, there's this longing, there's this how do I get to the person mm -hmm. that's in the music and is in our practice, how do we get to each other. And um, this is its own dramaturgy that came unconsciously, that is just me, that in the quality of the work I make. A lot of the work is triggering people's ability to understand or not understand things. And with the watermelon, with the contact at the end, um, with Raul singing a song that's not heard, there's, there's portions of meaning that you get from the audience. It floats in, you understand it, you hear the lyrics, you know the song, you understand the gesture, you see the pairing of the head with the watermelon. And then the next moment, there's, the logic is broken and the meaning doesn't make sense. And you understand the gesture, but you don't understand the context. Or you, you understand the feeling of the song, but your brain is confused because you don't actually hear the song. Um, but I think that meaning is, a, is the word I would first think of if I were an audience to my own piece. But it's interesting because also you start somehow uh, with actually saying a couple of words where you exactly are like like expressing a sort of nuance of, of meaning inside the same couple of words, if I remember it right. Yeah, I uh, break it. Yeah. The words dissolve, the gestures don't match the text. I'm, I'm changing the meaning yeah. of the words. Um, yeah, and this was the last part written in the piece. This was the last thing. So like a little... Hmm. The ex yeah like a, a key to almost an instruction booklet of how to then watch the rest of the work.